Hello fellow humans! This here is my old Yamaha CS40. I've had her for about 15 years, but I only started playing her two years ago and have since upgraded to a Taylor GS Mini. So I figured I'd try my hand at uh, turning this into a beautiful art guitar because, let's face it, its only reason for existing right now is looking pretty on my wall. So let's turn this kind of nice looking guitar into something beautiful. Alright then, let me show you my very first video. It is far from perfect. The video and the audio quality are not quite where I'd like them to be. Just looking at it now, you can probably tell that I do not have a handle on camera focus yet. I'm also not used to filming myself while working. So you will notice a few jumps in the timeline where I just forgot to turn on the camera. And I also can't seem to figure out how to keep the audio levels constant. So there is a slight shift in um, volume that you likely notice, but for now, I don't know how to get rid of it. But you know what? We're all starting out somewhere, right? Now let's get to the project you're actually here for. What you see right now is me planning and sketching out the design I later want to put on my guitar. I encountered my first challenges with the shape of the back. And while I'm overall very happy with the outcome, I could have done a better job especially with that barn owl's right wing. I wanted it to look like it's curving towards the viewer, but it ended up just looking squished into the shape. Originally I had planned to draw two barn owls but no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't make that work. There just wasn't enough space in the shoulders of the guitar to get the perspective that I wanted. I needed that upper owl to be much smaller so that the design would read as one owl dropping the key to the other. That led me to make that upper owl a little owl. And yes, that's actually what they are called. Those guys are tiny. Fully grown, they are only about the size of a fist. Since barn owls are also my go-to whenever I want to draw a bird, it was quite fun to switch it up for once. Aside from that, the rest of the design process was pretty straightforward. The next and biggest challenge was stripping the lacquer. I had figured it's a musical instrument. Getting that varnish off will be a walk in the park. But oh boy, was I wrong. The lacquer on this guitar could have doubled as ceramic glazing. It was so thick and sturdy. If you want to do a project like this, you really want to be careful while stripping the varnish. For one, the wood of the body is only about 3 mm or 2 eighths of an inch thick. And secondly, especially the top plates are usually braced from the inside. If you don't pay attention, you might end up thinning out the wood over those braces and compromising the structural integrity of your guitar. I started out with 240 grit paper, put my sanding tool on slow and applied very little pressure. And all that did was leave a few small scratches in the varnish. So I switched to 120 grit, turned up the speed and used more pressure and still I didn't really get anywhere. All I'd managed at that point was to turn that high gloss finish a bit milky. At that point I was like, screw this, this guitar is apparently built to take a lot of abuse and I stopped caring about damaging it. I switched to 80 grit paper, full speed and really went to town. It still took me 8 hours total to get all the varnish off. And because my wrists are little pussies that start to act up if I use power tools for prolonged stretches of time, I had to break that whole process down into little 20 minute sessions that I spread out over a couple of days. 
That was quite the exercise in patience. After that adventure in sanding, I had no qualms about doing pyrography on an acoustic guitar anymore. I had been a little worried about weakening the top plate, but as I mentioned, this girl has proven to be a lot stronger than you might think. So with great enthusiasm, I busted out my super cheap pyrography pen that I used for smaller projects here and there over the past decade. During the design stage, I hadn't been sure whether I should do the back or not, since you're not really going to see it anyway, but it is a lot of work. What finally convinced me to do it was the idea that I could treat the back as a practice space. And that proved to have been one of my better decisions. There were a few things that needed a bit of a trial and error period. I tried to cut corners while sanding and stopped before I was sure that I had it all taken off. As it turned out, you really have to get it all. Otherwise, the residual varnish will melt and smudge and fight you tooth and nail. I tried to make it work because I did not want to transfer the design again, which, by the way, I did by tracing it onto baking paper and then using some graphite transfer paper. But once I had all the outlines done, I just couldn't take it anymore. I went back to my workshop for another round of sanding. Thankfully, the outlines were burned deep enough so that I didn't have to start over again. Working with that super cheap wood burning tool also proved to qualify as a cheap art supply challenge. Yes, it is possible to create beautiful pyrography with this, but if you can afford it, do not get the cheapest of the cheap. It's just no fun and requires some extra skills. My recommendation is to get at least one with adjustable temperature. And that's what I did after repeatedly burning my writer's bump. On top of everything, my cheap burning pan turned too hot to hold after about 40 minutes. It's really not meant for bigger projects like this. My new pyrography pen is still nothing fancy, 
but it comes with a great variety of tips and the temperature dial helps you make the most of that. That makes the whole process so much more enjoyable. It also enabled me to get more details and to do shading without having to turn my pan off and on all the time. Most acoustic stringed instruments are built out of different woods. The sound boards are made out of soft wood, while back and sides are made out of hardwood. In this case, the spruce top was a lot more susceptible to the pyrography pan than the maple back and sides were. The temperature adjustment made it super easy to react to that. Now, if you're wondering why there is no footage of me working on the side, it wasn't all that difficult to work on the curved pieces of wood, but that really put me at an awkward angle to film, and since my design is so repetitive, I did not bother trying. I will, however, include them when I show you the finished guitar at the end of this video. Finally, I had to refinish the guitar, so I went looking for an appropriate varnish. At this point, I was still undecided whether I wanted to use colour or not. On one hand, everything blue is a plus in my book, and watercolour effects do look really lovely on pyrography. On the other hand, I also do love the natural colour of wood. There were a few other requirements on my list, though. First and foremost, the varnish needed to have as little impact as possible on the wood's ability to move, so that I could achieve the best possible sound. It also had to be easily available and transparent, of course. I also wanted it to be safe to handle. The varnish I chose in the end is an indoor wood glazing. 
you can apply it in very thin layers and it doesn't dry to be as rigid as the original lacquer was. It is also toy safe, meaning spit and sweat proof. And for an object that would probably be handled a lot and likely come into contact with sweat, I wanted to make sure to use something that wouldn't leak toxins. Sadly, that type of varnish did not come in blue. So I got white and clear and stuck to the natural wood color. Well, mostly. I did end up mixing some silver and gold shimmer effects acrylic paints into the varnish for the stars and keys.
Once the highlighting was done, I needed to apply the clear finish. As recommended on the can, I used a brush and applied it as thin as I possibly could. I went over the whole body five times before I had an even silk gloss finish. I only recorded doing one layer on the back though, because it's more of the same until you're done. Surprisingly, I needed to do very little sanding in between varnish layers. The wood fibers dried nice and smooth and only very few stood up afterwards. Now, don't forget the saddle when you're putting the strings back on. And she is done. I think she turned out absolutely gorgeous. I have rarely been so satisfied with the outcome of a project as I am with this one. There are a few areas that could have been better, like the edges around the neck joint, but I still think this is the most magical result I have ever achieved. If you love the owl on the soundboard as much as everyone who has seen this guitar so far, you can head over to my Redbubble store, link in the description, and get cute stickers and mugs and a variety of other stuff. And if you want to hear how the guitar sounds like now, come back next week and I will have a video dedicated to a before-after sound comparison for you. So all that's left now is to like, share, subscribe and do all the fun stuff. And I'll see you guys next week.